Nimbus. The space gate to Dark World is charged up and now open. Welcome back, X YouTube, Twitch. It's your boy KDZ bringing you guys another market watch. And again, guys, the reason why we do these videos is because I have a huge passion for trading card games. I love talking about trading card games and I want to continue to build a community that has the same love and passion for admiring all those gorgeous floor windows as I do. And with that, let's get into it. The audio is going to sound a little shaky today. I don't have uh, the headphones that I normally use with these market watches. I'm just using the the, the speakers on the, or the microphone that's on the laptop. So it's like picking up a lot of other ambient noise um, more than usual. There's like, there's probably going to be like this gritty sound or hazy sound. What is it? like radio silence sound, white noise sound in the background, uh, unfortunately. But we saw out here uh, January 10th, 2024, 335 Central Standard, 1535 Military, um, you know, doing a live market watch. It's not too bad. It's, it feels like a solid 45, um, but the wind is not blowing. So that's a, a significant deal. It's been a couple of days since we've been out here. Um, we were not talking about Kaito the last time we were here for sure. Uh, looking at Kaito Shizuki right now, the mythic out of Kamigawa Dynasty, the showcase, the foil etched, it's only about 10 bucks, which is actually not bad. I actually run Kaito Shizuki and this, this full art looks kind of cool as well. But I actually run Kaito, not Kaito Shizuki. I run Kaito Dancing Shadow, the one out of Phyrexia All Will Be One. I run that in the Planeswalker deck that I use in MTG Arena. And I just came here to check it because I was thinking about building it in real life because motherfuckers, they kill me in MTG Arena. Like, you really don't see this too much in Master Duel. But in MTG Arena, like, I will be losing, like, 3 to 28. And... I will have like four or five cards in hand. A little bit of card advantage on the board. Then my opponent, and they will just straight back out. Like they won't even play it out. Like I'm at three health, bro. You can't get me off of three health. And you at 28. And they will just straight back out. And it's killing me because you don't get anything out of that. Like I don't learn anything out of that. They don't learn anything out of that. It is back out expecting that they're going to lose, and I hate that. So I was thinking that, like, maybe building that deck in real life and trying it out, you know, at, like, Locals or something, just to see how it really plays. Um, I feel like I didn't play every type of deck that is conceivable right now in the, the standard metagame. Um So I feel like it 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 affair relatively nicely, even though like I I don't have it optimized because I play uh, best of ones on standard on MTG Arena. I don't play um, best two out of three with the side deck in the middle, which they do. They have multiple formats in MTG Arena, which is Master Duel is sorely missing outside of like their little special formats that they create themselves. Um, they have like five different formats that you get to straight up select that you want to play on MTG Arena, like. That's so dope. Like, if you want to play standard, you can select standard, play standard. If you want to play alchemy, which is the online version for the game, they have a whole bunch of alchemy cards that are only made online for that alchemy format. You can play alchemy format. I feel like I've talked about this before on the channel. But, um, you know, if you want to play standard best two out of three, you can do that. If you want to play standard best one of one, you can do that. Like, so they have severely diversified um you know the formats in that game which makes it a lot of fun um which more than master Duel recently but like i said at least in master Duel, i don't you don't i probably because how they have the gym system set up to where like you get gems regardless if you win or lose and if you back out you don't get anything probably because of that um you know people are more prone to actually stay in the match and finish it out even if they're losing but still, like that, it's extremely annoying. Annoying winning when somebody concedes on MTG Arena when they're beating you by twenty points. Like you weren't conceding when you were trying to attack me for game, bro. Don't concede when I'm about to attack you for game. Okay, I didn't concede because I wouldn't have learned nothing. 
even if it did look grim. Like I'm banking on a top deck to pull me back into the game. It looks grim. I'm not backing out. Like, like I said, nobody gets anything out of that. I don't know. I don't know if it's like some type of honor code or what, but it just doesn't sit right to me conceding under those circumstances. Like I've been playing that game for over a year now, and I've probably conceded like a total of four times in over a year's worth of playing. There's just no point, you know, take your whooping like a man. But again, the Kaito Dancing Shadow that I play that I think is really good, the most expensive version, the pre-release cards, rare, 51 listings is low, 74 cents, market price, 88 cents. The most expensive version is 88 cents. That's nothing. And then it even has an alternate art, borderless full art, that's even cheaper than that, which should have been the more expensive copy. The Kaito Dancing Shadow Borderless, 453 listings is low, 8 cents, market price, 32 cents. Granted... The alternate art, as you can see here, this is a full art version of the card. I don't think it looks, it doesn't resemble, like they, these, they did like a, um, some of the alternate arts they did in here, they were um, like anime artworks of the cards, which I think is super cool. I'm a huge anime fan. But the thing is, is that this Kaito doesn't look anything like the Kaito that's depicted in the story. It's like this Kaito is a completed Frexia and Kaito when he didn't get taken over by New Frexia. So it's like, why would you draw him like that when he didn't end up like that? So it's extremely disappointing that they gave us this for the anime artwork. And they did it to a couple of other cards, which I think is just super disappointing. Some of them look cool because they resemble their original artwork, like what they're depicted as in the story. But then some of them, like the Kaito, they're just complete misrepresentations and it, 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 it doesn't look good at all. Another thing I thought was weird was that they normally print a token card for every type of token that like comes out in a new set, right? And those tokens come out in a new set. But for some reason, they didn't give us a token for Kaito Dancing Shadow, the one that I play, which is super unfortunate. He would have a drone token. Um, I'm constantly playing it in MTG Arena. I thought they would have it here. They don't have it printed. And it's weird because, like I said, they printed the tokens in the sets of the respective cards that they're a part of. They don't like reprint the token. So I'm like, if they didn't print the token in here, would they ever print the token for Kaito Dancing Shadow? <laughs> Which is just super disappointing. One of the 10 Planeswalkers that I use in my deck, they don't have a token for it. Well, definitely this market watch wasn't going to be too structured. Like I said, we just get back into the game, getting back into the group. Like I said, they've been out here in a couple of days. Oh, yeah, that's right. Mason Millennia did get spoiled. A bonfire, four listings, is all 129.75 at one level for a lower pyro monster from your deck to your hand. Okay, it searches pyro monsters. Why is that? Why is it $129.75? Triple Tactics Thrust Ultra Rare is pre selling for 50. Now that can definitely shoot up. Um, but the Bonfire being at 129, I mean, unless they're giving Triple Tactics Thrust a collector's rare, I'm like curious about that. I mean, these are pre sales and TCG player. You know how people like to, well, no, this is like where I said the, the merchants who pedal uh, Konami, Yu Gi Oh! TCG products, they can make their bank. When they say there's no money in Yu Gi Oh!, this is where you make your money at on these ridiculous pre-sales that people apparently buy because as you can see there's a market price of 129.82 for bonfire meaning that somebody bought it at 129.82 at least somebody bought transaction rollback at 99.99 at least and people have been buying maze and millennia booster boxes at 76.36 at least and these prices are not going to hold not even close so when is the official release if if they if they um, drop the spoilers this week. It's probably going to be next Friday then. Well, I know Bonfire, I know it affects uh, uh, Centurion because they have a Pyro Monster in there, either Chudea or the other one. Uh, 
um one of those is pyro so it's it's playable in that deck it'll be playable in simple spoils i'm not sure if it's playable in rescue aces there are pyro monsters in there i know they have warriors and machines but do they have pyro monsters number one infection bus king how many number ones do we have now and why is he four listings as old as 2970 infection bus king hold on Number one in okay, what's going on, TCG player? <laughs> Seem like you're struggling there a little bit. Number one, they gave us 90, a thousand. Gee whiz, that's not gonna work. Number one, let's see if we can do it like this. That worked. No, it did not work. Number one, Numeron Gate Ecom. And number one, Infection Buzz King. Numeron Gate Ecom. What is this? So it's Battles of Legend Armageddon. Then they reprint it in the Maximum Gold Eldorado. Wait, hold on. How many Numeron Gates did they reprint in Maximum Gold Eldorado? If they uh, reprinted quite a few, because I didn't know any of these Numeron cards got reprints. Like I said, I was picking these to not be reprinted in the Battles of Legend Complete Series. And number 100, Numeron Dragon. So is that a Baryon card? Uh, Yeah, is that a Baryon card? I mean, Numeron Calling? I, I didn't realize there was so many cards that actually had Numeron in the name. Numeron Network. Brink up Magic Numeron Force. Uh, number 100, Numeron Dragon. Number, oh, Chaos number one, Numeron Chaos Gate soon yet. So, okay, I see, I see. And Battles of Legend Armageddon, Battles of Legend Armageddon, Maximum Gold. So they did, huh? Rank Down Magic, Numeron Fall. They reprinted numbers one through four in the Maximum Gold set. So I definitely wouldn't expect any reprints of those in the Battles of Legend complete series from the looks of this. I completely gloss over that. And that's such an easy set to gloss over. Like when we're doing our trip down memory lanes, that's normally a time time you would pick up on, you know, like a an obscure set, you know, like that with some obscure printings in it. But we ain't going to be doing a trip down memory lane for, like, whenever Maximum Go Eldorado and Maximum Go Premium Go came out. In a while. Because it hasn't been that long ago. It'll still be a trip down memory lane for sure. A lot can happen in a year. But for sure, if we could get TCG player to start working normally again. <laughs> Number 100, Numeron Dragon, quarter QCSR out of 25th anniversary ready collection. 43 listings as well as 370, market price 360. That's card, that card is prime, guys. I mean, like I said, the estimated base price for a QCSR is already at 40. It might be a little bit higher. And this is 10% of the estimated base price. So... If that is the case, I mean, yeah, this could at least be a $10 card. So, I mean, you're at least doubling your money, however much you put into it. <clears throat> Not a bad profit margin, but of course, you know, I don't know your time horizon, you know, what you're willing to be able to wait, how long you're willing to be able to wait to cash in on a certain investment. But of course, guys, this is not a financial advising channel, and this is financial advice. I'm just telling you guys how I look at these CCG markets. Um, yeah, and number 100, number 100, and QCSR is hella prime. <laughs> look at all the printings number 100, number 100, Dragon has now. At uh, Dragons of Legend Unleashed, <laughs> the original print secret, it was at least a $10 plus dollar card. And then it got four ultra rare reprints in Dragons of Legend, the complete series. 
Then it got a secret rare reprint in Battles of Legend and Crystal Revenge. It got another secret rare reprint. And then it got seven printings in the 25th anniversary rarity collection, including a prismatic ultimate rare and a prismatic collector's rare. Undoubtedly, the most undervalued version is the uh, Platinum Secret at 118 listings is those 20 cents, market price 39 cents. That's ridiculously undervalued. Criminally, one should say. But yeah, all the um, numbers one through four, they got the premium gold, uh, maximum gold Eldorado rare gold reprint. So, well, actually, they gave us number two, Gate Dive, number three, Numeron Gate Trini, yeah, number four, Numeron Gate Aketvari. And Chaos number one, Numeron, Chaos Gate, Sonya. So they gave us all of them. Did they give us Numeron Calling? Battles of Legend Armageddon. And they did, or unless that secret rare carried over. Uh, yep, they gave us Numeron Calling. Um, Numeron Chaos Ritual. Whoa, okay, so that's original to maximum go Eldorado. Numeron Chaos Ritual. They gave us Numeron Wall in there. Numeron Creation, a common out of Photon Hibernova, single print. It had no idea, but it has freaking Numeron Dragon in it. In the lore window, that's dope. They like flying this place, that's a dope lore window. Numeron Network was also reprinted in Maximum Go Eldorado. And then another original print, new, uh, Maximum Go Eldorado, Numeron Card, Numeron Storm. Premium Go Rare, Numeron Chaos Ritual, Premium Go Rare, original to that set. And then rank down magic numero fall rare, uh, single print, uh, out of legacy to valiant. We'll rank up magic numero force. Wasn't there another one? It was like there was another, um, single print that was original to maximum go Eldorado. It was like number one million numeronis numeronius or something like that. Hold on. We're about to go down the rabbit hole and find this guy. You know, like I was saying, we're going to try to find this. We'll just reverse engineer it, go back into Maximum Gold, Eldorado. <laughs> Anyways, wow, unbelievable. Out of Maximum Gold, Eldorado, we come back here and look. Access Code Talker, we got a filter A to Z, but it's definitely the most expensive card to set. It's pushing 40 bucks for the premium gold. Are you kidding me? Forty dollars when you can get displays for sixty two forty six. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. These MSRP for like thirty dollars, do they not? If maximum gold Eldorados are MSRP and for thirty dollars, you get displays for sixty. 
Well, this is a major flop. Even though Access Code Talker is sitting at 52 listings, so it's 3701, market price 3931. And Chamber Dragon Maid is sitting at 94 listings from 644, market price 886. IP Alter Art is 68 listings, so it's 740, market price 732. Hmm. And the display is only getting you. How many packs come in a box? Four packs, two premium gold rares. So you're looking at eight premium gold rares per box. Eight times five, 40 per display. There's 61 different ones. Okay, so you can definitely whiff and miss IP, Chamber, and um, Access Code Talker. But the rarity is just, it's so trash. Hence, the many boxes in the displays are just ridiculously cheap. I mean, they're not as cheap as like the 2021 Mega 10 case from like MSRP to where it currently is now, but they're freaking cheap. But Access Code Dogger is not. That motherfucker is money. 40 bucks for the premium gold rare? Get the freak out of here. With 52 listings on the market. <laughs> <coughs> oh, that Nigeria listing was yeah, it's 20 bucks. People trying to fire sell it, trying to get rid of it, make a quick 20 buck, $20 out of it. Rightfully so. Get a Oh no, okay. So the secret rare out of Crystal's Revenge, 43 listings is low, as low as $34.99, but market price got it at 4655 And then the Eternity Code Secret Rare, 43 listings from $49.20, market price $54.36. So if you bought your access code talkers when they drop down to 30, I mean if you bought a playset for a hundred, you're not looking too bad right now. If you got the playset for the hundred, hold on. Let's go into Crystal Revenge real quick. We completely off topic. We were supposed to be looking up like Numeronis, Numeronius, or whatever. We were over here in Crystal Revenge. I wanted to see what the booster box. Okay, Crystal Revenge booster box is thirty nine listings. Um, from forty seven, forty seven, Mark price forty six, thirty eight. I think they were cheaper than this at one point. I think they were around like forty two dollars at one point. Um, Blackwing Armor Master, 26 listings from $45, market price 50 for the Starlight Rare. That's a freaking steal. Estimated base price, a case of these, $12, $600. That's the estimated base price for a Starlight Rare out of this set is $600. You're two for one in Exodia right now, even though they got the QCSR. You're two for one in the Access Code Talker, which does not have the QCSR. And is a heavy meta staple. And it's connected to the anime used by the main character. So Access Code Talker has ridiculous stand power. Uh, I could see Access Code Talker doubling in price. Uh, number F zero Utopia Draco Future. Um, this shot up from five to seven fifty to about nine fifty. Um, Clockwork Knight. That one has been the biggest winner. I would say. I want to say this was a, a three dollar card. It shot up to ten. So if you really want heavy into Clockwork Knight, um, you're you're definitely reaping some benefits now. Mm. 
Brutal Savage Dragon is brutal. I mean, yeah, it was a ten dollar card. Now it's a two dollar card. Whoever had them and didn't sell them, it's tough. I was contemplating picking it up when it was seven, and I was just like, "Wait a minute! It's about to get a reprint in a couple of months, and it's going to be a dollar. Why would I?" And I just bought the reprint when it was a dollar. It was less than a dollar. It was like thirty cents. So it was like, it made no sense, you know, to say good things come to those who wait. Go back to Maximum Go real quick, though. See if we can find Numeronius Numeronus. It was an exceed monster for sure. Danger Bigfoot alternate art is cents on the dollar. When that red eyes darkness metal dragon alternate art is actually pretty cool. Didn't this get an? I'm gonna have to look this one up. Cause that that alternate art is sick. That is sick, and I think it got another printing that was not in premium go rare. <clears throat> That Black Rose Dragon artwork is pretty cool, too. I mean, the fact that they've been reprinting the alternate arts like they gave <laughs> they gave us Elish the Golden Lord <clears throat> new set alternate art. A couple of other cards. They need to give us Bigfoot, IP, Red Eyes, Darkness, Metal, Black Rose. They need to give us all of them. And differences. They gave us Cyber Dragon, Infinity, and like Dual Overload. It's alternate art. A Chaos Dragon Levy and Nier, I believe, was also on Dual Overload and its alternate art. Let's go ahead and look. Oh, no, we still haven't found Num Numeronius Numeronus. Like, how far down here are you, guy? You're original to the set. Urgent Schedule's way back here. Dirt Cheap. There it is. Number C1000. Chaos number 1000. Numeronius. 224 listings from nine cents market price 26 cents premium go rare those are a couple other cards that they also need to reprint that they're not locked behind the legit premium gold rare i mean if you want to think long-term winners cards that don't get reprints those obvious they, they don't have reprints they're connected to the anime they're in premium gold rare nobody wants to buy this set But 224 listings, that's tough. But I mean, 224 listings is a lot, but the fact that it's 26 cents is not. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure like 100 listings could get sniped overnight if somebody really wanted to. It's red as darkness metal, though. Metal Lee. Red Eyes Darkness Metal. T3 listings. Secret Red, a legendary collection for Red Eyes Darkness Metal. Uh, 56 listings from 840, market price 1960 for the Secret Red, a legendary collection for. Okay. The Dual Saga Red Eyes Darkness Metal is $7. Hold on, wasn't there another one up here? Like, uh, yeah, Shonen Jump Magazine promo Red Eyes Darkness Metal 39 listings from 29, I mean, 24.94, market price 65.11. Wow, who would have thought that Red Eyes Darkness Metal printings would still be holding this type of value? What? The maximum go. There it is. Legendary Duel Season 1, Red Eyes Darkness, Metal Dragon, Alternate Art in Common. That's kind of atrocious. They put it in common. I wonder if they put it in Speed Duel, though, and make it like a secret rare. That'd be cool. But, I mean, I'm a fan of non-foils, so I'll gladly take this Red Eyes Darkness Metal any day. 
Look at that. Look how clean that looks. Look how powerful he looks in this artwork. He just looks kind of dopey in the original one. Like his mouth looks all disproportionate. Like his his body proportions are off. Like his his head looks significantly bigger than the rest of his body. But this looks so balanced and like I said, so sleek, so strong. <laughs> this looks like a card that would be limited to one. Man, I'm probably gonna go ahead and pick up like ten copies today. Fifty cents. It's not bad. And I'm probably build a deck around him just so I can play. Just so I can play. Because it's that cool. But of course, guys, we can't be out here all day. Hopefully, I provided some value with this live stream market watch. Unfortunately, we had to deal with the, the microphone issues. But like Kakarot, <laughs> send me your energy so we could get that space gate charged up and try to deliver consistently. But with that, we're going to be getting up out of here. Nimbus. Are we in there? Are we in there? Yeah, we in there.